Well, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Um, I've got uh, got a comment from uh, from Dennis that made me think that uh, it might be worth just doing something very quick just to clarify what I was doing with those uh, uh, with those lamps and how what uh, what I was doing yesterday, fiddling around with the uh, with the MOSFET and the lamps, uh, relates uh, to the amplifier circuit. So that's the circuit I drew yesterday. Now I um, simplified that. Um, it's not exactly the same as what I was doing. Uh, the difference was. Now let's see if uh, this can, I can keep this in focus. The other thing too is that uh, again I can't see the viewfinder, so I've got no idea how this is going to look. But what I actually did was that wasn't connected like that. Uh, there was. There was actually two lamps. Like that. And uh, my new power supply there was generating 30 volts. And that went like that. So that was the uh, that was what I was actually doing yesterday. That's the actual circuit diagram of what I was doing yesterday. Um, and how that relates to the amplifier is in the amplifier that I thought I had a sponge my sponge has disappeared how that relates to the amplifier is in the amplifier uh, to set the cathode bias Remember in the amplifier, I've got the triode, so I've got the uh, uh, the cathode is actually connected inside the tube to the heater element, and we've got a bifilar, bifilar, however it's pronounced, RF choke in the cathode. There's my triode. That's the GS35. Now that goes off to the heater supply, like that. And because the cathode is connected to this side of the filament, uh, this is decoupled of course, there's decoupling capacitors in there on both sides. See, I did say I'd uh, keep it simple, but um, there we go. And that goes, that goes, that point there, then goes to there, like that. Uh, in actual fact, that doesn't go directly there. That goes to the uh, ne negative HT supply, and these are tied together. This is tied together with uh, a couple of diodes back to back, like that. So. Um, that uh, what what the uh, what the MOSFET's doing is acting as a voltage controlled variable resistor, and by adjusting the uh, the gate voltage here, I'm adjusting the voltage here at this point here, which is adjusting the uh, adjusting the bias voltage on the cathode here. And the more positive I make that, the more negative. the grounded grid appears with respect to the cathode. So as I turn this gate voltage up and down, so this voltage here goes up and down, and uh, um, that um, as this goes up and down, that makes the, uh, 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 the grid bias effectively uh, go up and down without having a variable um, voltage uh, grid supply. So that's, that's where that fits into the circuit. Let's say some decoupling here, probably put a decoupling cap there as well. That goes off to the fans. Now, I actually uh, calculated this, this resistor here will be dissipating about 7 watts. I've got, um, I've got two 100 watt resistors in parallel. <laughs> so that, that's only 1.5 ohms. And it's two 3.3 ohms in parallel. 
Um, they're 100 watt resistors, um, which are the metal ones that bolt onto a heatsink. And um, the, the only reason I used those was because uh, I had them in the junk box and uh, together they gave me the right value. So that, go, that goes off to the fans, like that. So that's, uh, that's the cathode, that's the cathode bias circuit using the, uh, the MOSFET. Oops, I hope that uh, looks, I hope that makes a little more sense. And uh, all I was doing with the, uh, replacing the triode with the, uh, uh, with the car lamps was just to, just to make sure that, um, um, you know, I could adjust the, uh, the, uh, the gate bias on the FET turn the voltage up and down and um, pass the, uh, the sort of current that I was interested in passing. So that's, uh, that's it. Okay, well I hope, uh, hope that made some sense. Um, thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you next time.